Hello and welcome to a special edition of Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus today is on an organization that's mission is to enable African Americans to secure economic self-reliance, parity, power, and civil rights. The Milwaukee Urban League is celebrating 100 years and here to reflect on their rich past, the present, and their bright future is the president and CEO, Dr. Eve Hall. How are you, Dr. Hall? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to have you here. Glad to be back. Remember, I was yes. here before. You've been here many times. And for those watching uh, who may not be aware of all that the Milwaukee Urban League does, if you would uh, talk about the mission to empower communities and change lives. So our tagline, as you just said, is so important because every day, Andrea, we are working with individuals to help them find jobs, to help individuals who may be transitioning to different jobs. Mm -hmm. We're working directly with our schools um, by helping students think about their future um, plans, whether it's going directly to work or to college. We're in the community and with business leaders really speaking about economic vibrancy in terms of equity and opportunity. Absolutely. And our goal today, as I mentioned, is to look at the past, the present, and the future of the organization. The Urban League is formerly known as the National League on Urban Conditions Among Negroes. And it was founded in New York City in 1910. And the Milwaukee chapter was founded in 1919. So talk about how it feels to be celebrating 100 years of service. Well, it's an honor because not every organization makes it to 100 yeah, years. And, you know, we were really critical when we started because it was during the time of the Great Migration when you had, you know, five to eight million African Americans moving from the south to the north to the east to the west. Mm -hmm. And the significance of the Urban Leagues is that we were really the organizations that provided support when families entered our city. So here in Milwaukee, you know, we were connecting families to jobs, mm -hmm. connecting families to housing, helping them identify um, access to good health care, entrepreneurs who were trying to start their businesses. We were the ones out there supporting them as well. And then just in general, education, um, whether it was us helping to train individuals, provide uh, credentials, to um, support with after school programs, to connections with education. We were really the spokesperson and, and advocates for African American families um, becoming stable in our nation yeah. and here locally. And what's so important about everything you just said is that you're still doing that today. Uh, like you said, every organization can't really uh, say that they're, they've been able to maintain uh, that type of credibility over the years where people know where to turn. And for those who don't know, mm -hmm. that's why we're here today. Uh, it was actually in 1920 that the organization took the present name, the Urban League. And during that time, and like you said, even now, an employee employment services is a main priority. Talk about some of the ways that you are able to help individuals who are looking to find employment or even get back into the job market. So we actually have employment specialists um, on site who work directly with individuals, really assess them on where they are to determine what would be the best next steps for them. Mm -hmm. We provide soft skill training for them, Andrea. We also provide driver's license recovery because we have a number of people who need to get their driver's license back or get one in the first place and mm -hmm. you know that is very critical to getting jobs. Um, we have programs in which the jobs are actually subsidized for a certain number of months um, through the employer until a person can get back on their feet. We really look at GED to PhD mm -hmm. in terms of who we work with because we're, we're working even with professionals who are trying to make decisions as to whether they even want to stay in Milwaukee. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the driver's license. Uh, there's the Workforce Technology Center that's in support of Northwestern Mutual and then your driver's permit class in cooperation with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation and Division of Motor Vehicles. So obviously, collaboration is a very important component when it comes to workforce development. Uh, talk about how you're able to collaborate with other uh, businesses and organizations across the city. Well, what's wonderful is, first of all, we have a board that mm -hmm. is comprised of 
of many of our major companies, like Northwestern Mutual, mm -hmm. who actually was responsible for um, redeveloping our technology center with refurbished laptops, you know, painting the walls, new furniture, et cetera. Um, Johnson Controls, who supports us with laptops, GE Healthcare, who support our STEM programs, and I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. So just starting with our board is collaboration and support. And then we also collaborate with nonprofit organizations, others who have similar uh, focus areas like uh, Employ Milwaukee, the African American Chamber of Commerce, LISC, Greater Milwaukee Foundation, you know, to just name a few. Mm -hmm. And in all of these endeavors, we're focusing on education, its economic vibrancy, or its employment. Okay, and Dr. Hoff, you would uh, just remind everyone where you're located and really uh, what is the uh, process they should follow if they want to come to the Urban League to uh, look into some of the programs and services that you offer? So first of all, we're at 435 West North Avenue. We're right next to the new Black Holocaust Museum, mm -hmm. which is on Bell Phillips. So we're on a, a historical block, actually. Yeah. Um, people can come directly to our office. We're open from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. They can call 374-5850 and you know, get information that way. They can also connect as volunteers by joining two of our, one of, of two of our auxiliaries, which is the Guild, and those are for over 40, and then our Young Professionals, which are under 40. And these are two groups that support the mission of our organization, help raise money, um, volunteer their time to support our programs. Yes, good stuff. And uh, finally, before we wrap up this segment, wanted to know how the Urban League has been able to take the challenges as well as the successes from the past 100 years and uh, uh, work it into all the things that you do today. Well, one of the significant parts of what we do is we collaborate with everyone. So we collaborate across race, gender, um, you know, religion, et cetera, because we know we need everyone at the table. Mm -hmm. And that's been the hallmark from the very beginning. We were started um, with a cross-section of people, again, representing, you know, different races, gender, religion, because we know collectively that's how we make a difference. Yeah. That is what has helped to prolong and sustain us over these 100 years, and it remains at our core as to how we really look at resolving the issues in our community. Yeah, and that reminds me, we were <laughs> jokingly saying you've been here many times, but the last time you had come by, it was with Mark Shapiro, who's the president of That's the Jewish right. Community mm -hmm. Center, and you guys uh, came together to really bring people together from uh, two different uh, sides of the track to realize what you have in common and how you can make a difference together. And that's really what it's all about, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I want you to stay there. We're gonna continue our conversation, but I uh, want you to keep in mind that if you'd like to get more information on anything we've discussed thus far, you can visit tmul.org or call 414-374-5850. We're gonna take a quick break and come back to continue our conversation with the Urban League's president and CEO, Dr. Eve Hall and we'll talk about the amazing things happening with the Urban League as they prepare for their 34th annual Black and White Ball. We'll do that right after this. <music> 